Please join me in our call to worship. Can you be homesick for something you've never known? We are, we are homesick for a world where all are fed, where the laughter is contagious, where the doors are wide open. We are homesick for a world with more bridges than walls, where trees grow tall and rivers run clear. We are, we are homesick for a world where all people feel at home, in their bodies, in their churches, in their homes. We long for that world. We hope for that world. So today, we light the candle of hope, because hope keeps our hearts alive as we wait. May this light be a reminder that the wait is always worth it. We are homesick, but we are on our way. Come, let us worship God. Do we hope against hope or do we throw in the towel? 
Do we insist on a better world, or do we assume it's impossible? Friends, join me in the prayer of confession. Let us all say it aloud. Forgive us for the days when cynicism wins. Forgive us for numbing our homesick heart instead of using it to fuel a better world. Kindle in us a hope that won't let go. Gratefully we pray. Amen. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. 
Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
it feels like it happened yesterday and it was years ago. Um, but I have donated and helped with Reddington Starburst ever since I joined the church years ago. And it was formed in 1987 when local churches came together to provide a temporary safety net to meet emergency needs of people who live in Reddington Township. I continue to support Starfish because every town has people who are going through hard times and it's hard for people to ask for help. It's a respectful way for neighbors to help neighbors while allowing people, donors and recipients, to be anonymous. They try to destigmatize what it means to need help. Through our giving tree, our church members donate Christmas gifts and wrapping paper for clients and their children. Before school starts in September, we supply new backpacks loaded with supplies. Four times a year, we help Starfish volunteers distribute food baskets to families in need. But we may not realize that Starfish also assists families by paying for heating oil, electricity bills, rent, and car insurance. And every week of the year, Starfish maintains a food pantry at Our Lady of Lords Catholic Church so that people who need food can receive an allotment when they need it most. It's important to understand that Starfish is not a social welfare program. Most Starfish clients do not qualify for social welfare, but they still need a helping hand to keep their families safe and secure. Reddington Starfish is all about community members helping community members. One important goal is awareness. Starfish hopes that everyone will understand that anyone is just one step away from needing assistance, and that's okay. Reddington Area Starfish is an anonymous charitable organization. 100% of all financial donations go directly to the program, with the small exception of paying the renewal fees. There are no salaries. All members are volunteers. If you want to get more involved with Starfish, you can donate food, gifts, and supplies, volunteer to organize quarterly distributions, making a financial donation, Increase awareness in our neighborhood that Starfish exists for people to both donate and receive help. Professionals such as attorneys and accountants are needed who can donate their expertise. Stacy Stansberry, who you all know, who serves on the board for Starfish, says, The best result is when Starfish helps to get someone back on their feet, and then that person returns to help other Starfish clients. That's the hope that keeps people like Stacy and other volunteers committed. Our church is proud to help Starfish make Reddington a great home for everyone who lives here. Thank you so much, Carol. I love Carol's point. She sat down today with me and she told me that story and I'm so glad she shared it with you. This is a story about what we get when we participate <coughs> in the so this year I was lucky to help out during the distribution hours. I haven't done that yet here in Bennington. And days of preparation had already taken place. Uh, I, I volunteered on a Sunday afternoon when clients were coming in. But people have been working on this since, well, first to gather food as we do here, but then on Sunday afternoon, a whole army of Boy Scouts and people from Rockaway Reform descended on this very, very large social hall at Our Lady of Lourdes. And they transformed that social hall, they packed up all those heavy tables and all the chairs, and they turned it into a distribution center that was just targeted to help each individual client who came one by one on the afternoon that I was there. So Mary King was there, Stacy was there, some others of you may have been there. There's so much work to do, um, checking every, all the donations for expiration dates, getting, receiving donations of fresh food, um, learning about each family and what each family needs, and then the part my daughter likes when she's gotten to do this, um, deciding which family gets which cool stuff. So all the, all the uh, shopping bags are lined up, one for each family, by the time I got there. Um, so my only job was to pick up the bags and put them in the carts and make sure that they were lined up in order of when people were coming to pick them up. It wasn't a very hard job at all. And it could have been a boring job, and it could have been a 
tedious job, that it wasn't really like that. The hours didn't seem long and repetitive. It didn't seem like drudgery. And that's because the people I was working with, they loved what they were doing. They loved what they were able to provide from the home. Not just themselves, but what the whole community was able to provide. They loved reminding clients to pick up their large container of milk on the way out because the, the milk stayed outside to stay cold. They loved rising downstairs to a freezer to retrieve an extra frozen ham or turkey. And um, I saw one of the volunteers ask, well, how big do you want? And the woman just said, well, how big do you got? <laughs> it was joy. It was totally a whole afternoon of joy. So what does starfish have to do with this reading? That's my job in the next few minutes. Jesus is saying that our fear of the end times is a normal part of our earthly lives. We're just going to get really afraid sometimes and think the world is about to end. This has been happening all through history. And people have been seeing these signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and in what's happening among the nations, right? Jesus says, we have seen the distress upon nations on this earth. These all feel like signs that tell us how our how the life without God is just dissolving and it's not going well. So Jesus is relating to us in the isolation we feel sometimes and in the despair we feel sometimes. And Jesus says that this is so common, it's, it's like seeing the buds form on the tree. Or we could say seeing the frost and the little bit of snow telling us Get ready, it is time for, for winter. And we can relate, right? In these days of global warming, we can relate with everyone who is confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. Especially when the sea and the waves are too close to homes. We have seen people who faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon our world when they sense at a deep level that the powers of heaven are being shaken. This kind of foreboding happens to all of us at one time or another. When we sense ourselves having, when these thoughts are creeping up on us, we think that things might only get worse, then we have a few choices. One strategy is we can kind of ignore it. We can try to push our armies to the side and pretend that if we just mind our own business and do what we have to do and keep going, we'll get through. And that strategy works sometimes. And another strategy is that we can narrow our focus to what is right in front of us. We can put ourselves and our family and the people we care about first in our minds and try not to think about what's happening both of these things can work, and both of them are perfectly decent strategies to get through. And they work until tragedy knocks on our own door, right? This foreboding may retreat to the background, but it never really goes away. Sometimes it shows up in our dreams or in a knot in our stomach that comes from the realization that life, all life, is more complicated and all beings on our globe are more connected than any of us ever thought. And there's no way to save us or anyone else from the consequences of these events. But there's a third strategy, and that's Jesus' option. Jesus says, when you get this feeling, look up. Look up, and when we do, perhaps we too will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And that sounds like a good reason to look up, but sometimes, in moments like Harold described, you look up and it's a small moment of glory. 
It's a small moment when you join with children, as Carol did, in just an hour or so of creative play, creating a home for those minutes where there hadn't been a home before. These are the moments, Jesus says, where our redemption is drawing near. And that was his, his words for us, right? We heard that last week. The kingdom is drawing near. That's what Jesus said as soon as he was baptized. That's what he went out to proselytize. That's what he asked us to do, to convince people who are despairing. The kingdom of heaven is drawing near. It's so close. After I took on this very small Tuesday afternoon role among dozens of volunteers and benefiting from thousands of donors, possibly, in a month or long starfish distribution process, I realized, like Carol told us, that I felt a little bit better about where the world is going. I felt a little braver about standing up and raising my head up in hope. I felt less jaded, less cynical, a little less despairing of where we're headed. Four or five hours working with others who loved what they were doing, who treated clients, each one, each family who entered, each time they entered for that moment, they were the most important people on earth. How could you be cynical in the face of that kind of goodness and generosity? And you all helped make it happen. Maybe you felt this too, when you grabbed your giving tree gift tab off a tree, or when you placed your giving tree gift below the tree, either this year or another year when you did this, or you just feel good when you see the pile of gifts growing for strangers. Perhaps you feel this way as you contribute in other ways, outside your own household and families, for people and causes that are bigger, than the needs any one of us has. Today, Jesus tells us that the healthiest way to deal with foreboding is to stand up. To stand up and face it head on. We can address the fear of end times by directly participating and channeling God's love to all God's people. This is what Jesus means when he says we must remember to take heart, for in those moments, our redemption, not the redemption of our recipients, but we hope them too. And Stacy said some of them do come back to give. Our redemption is drawing near. In these moments, Jesus would tell you, you are living outside of ordinary time. Because at the core, what we all want is very simple. We want to feel alive, not just to exist, but to thrive. We want to live out loud, to walk tall, to breathe free. We want to be less lonely, less exhausted, less conflicted and afraid, more awake, more grateful, more energized, more purposeful. We want a pervasive sense of being mindful, of overbrimming life. We want the words like well-being and shalom and and blessedness to fill our lives as much as they can. Wholeness and harmony. That's what this season is about. The hope of this kind of overflowing aliveness. Today, our starfish friends remind us we can always start this close to home. So pray with me. Thank you, Jesus for all the people in our lives whom you inspire to care for one another. Help us build a caring home in our hometowns, in our home buildings, in our home lives. Amen.
confess our faith with new words that you have said before, but not in a while. Words from the RCA's Our Song of Hope that are printed in your bulletin. We sing to our Lord a new song. We sing in our world with sure hope. Our God loves this world. God called it into being. God renews it through Jesus Christ. God governs it by the Spirit. We are a people of hope, waiting for the return of our Lord. God has come to us for the ancient people of Israel as the true Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, as the Holy Spirit at work in our world. Our Lord speaks to us now through the inspired scriptures. Christ is with us day by day. Come, Lord Jesus, we are open to your Spirit. We await your full presence. Our world finds rest in you alone. Amen. So we have a few prayer requests. So first, this is not to alarm anyone, but Bernie Lewis had a small accident. He was participating in a turkey trot. Go, Bernie! And he tripped and fell and got scraped and a bit bruised. So he needs to stay home and quiet today, but he assures us he's doing well. So we will keep him in prayers for quick recovery. We are praying for Emily Smalley's grandfather, Don, who's still struggling with health. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide him and Emily's father and Emily and her grandmother as they seek medical wisdom and medical support. And we ask God to be with Dawn at this difficult time. Alex Ritter's friend Allison lost her mother last night. Her, na her name is Robin Schechter, and she died after a long illness, though she was only in her 50s. So let us pray for Alex as he cares for Allison and Allison and all the people who loved her mother. We're also praying for uh, Pat's friend, sister, Andrea, who was diagnosed with metastatic lung cancer. And she will start radiation on Wednesday to treat tumors in her head. So she also is not old enough to leave this world and she has many loved ones to care for. So let us keep Andrea, that's dear friend's sister, in our hearts and minds. God of the weary and those who wait, scripture tells us where two or more are gathered, you are in our midst. So we trust, Lord, that you are here listening to our prayers in your home drawing us close and stirring hope to awaken in us. For this, we are so very grateful. Today, Holy God, we feel close to home and close to you. We feel close to you when we enter this sanctuary and someone calls us by name. We feel, we feel close to home when we see the Advent tree wreath return and when the candle is lit. When we sing songs that anticipate the joy of Christmas, when we wrap the very first present, we feel close to home when our children call home, and when our grandchildren come to us and they're curious, when we find moments of true connection over holiday meals, when we are brave enough to be who you called us to be in our lives, Lord. However, even with gratitude for our close to home moments, we recognize that buried deep within us, Lord, we have homesick hearts. Holy God, we are homesick for a world we have not seen. We are homesick for a world where oceans are clean, where trees are plentiful and animals are not endangered. We are homesick for a life where days feel expansive and where Sabbath rest feels possible for all people. We are homesick for days when poverty is not stigmatized, 
when mental health is not stigmatized, when asking for help is not stigmatized, when self-worth is not a scarcity. God, who never leaves us alone, we carry both hope and homesickness with us at all times. Hold these two sides of our conflicted souls together, Lord. We ask you to flame both flames. Remind us, Lord, that hope is a gift that no one deserves. It's just a grace that comes down from your Holy Spirit. And homesickness, Lord, is a, is a gift too. Homesickness is a reminder. It's a reminder to turn to you, Lord. May we bear with homesickness. Help us to be on guard so that our hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And so that the coming of your kingdom does not catch us up unexpectedly, like a trap, as Wendy read. Lord, when we feel hopeless, homesickness, may we acknowledge that we share the deep conviction of your heart. It's your heart, Lord. It's your sense of our homesickness. That we share this conviction that this world should be otherwise. That a better world should arise in its place. That we <coughs> can do our part to make this world a better home for everyone who resides here. For each of these convictions, Lord, we give you thanks. Now, with the conviction of children, let us pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power,
Phoenicians were looking for how, um, how when we give what it does for us. That's kind of our closer for home message this season. And that's what I ask you to consider, how hope is brought in our community and in our own lives by helping others. So everyone knows if you look at the back of the bulletin that today is our annual meeting, so I hope you will stay. And then we have two more events, um, Sunday, December 5th, we're going to do a trimmer tree family event and a donation drive. We could use some more help on that, so there's a sign-up genius for that. And then, it's really wonderful, Ingrid Vitez has helped uh, us connect with the White House Wind Symphony, and they're going to fill this sanctuary with their songs for their last concert of the season. So I hope you'll all come, but we have small jobs for each of us to do, like handing out programs or helping direct people. So I hope you'll sign up both as coming and as helping. And finally, we are going to have poinsettias. So it's such a joy to get back to some of our routines that we didn't get to do our traditions around here. And poinsettias is a very important one. So I urge you to talk to Judy so she can get rolling on getting the poinsettias rolling in and making our sanctuary even more beautiful. Now I ask you to bow your head and receive God's blessing. Friends, as you leave this service and as you leave our annual meeting, your service to God begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek peaceful sanctuary. And be brave enough to go home by another way when you need to. Here in God's house, all are welcome, all 